and better tanks and self-propelled artillery. More and harder hitting guns of every type and size. More ability to speedily repair or construct airfields and other vital military installations. More means of transporting whole divisions of better armed, better trained men. These were the weapons of war that played so vital a part in our complete, overwhelming victory in World War II. And behind the success of all our military might, making it possible for every piece of equipment to strike its winning blows against our enemies, the internal combustion engine in a wide variety of types, designs, and sizes. Engines that had to keep delivering their power under every conceivable kind of operating condition. The steady, dependable performance of American gasoline and diesel engines was one of the outstanding achievements of the war. In their never-ending victorious thrusts, our military equipment had to keep going at temperatures far above and below zero, over good roads and bad, or no roads at all. Under the toughest battle conditions imaginable, they had to be ready to roll and keep rolling without let-up. Once the command was given, there was no stopping for repairs. Any unit that failed was left by the wayside for replacement by a new unit. And mighty few failed because of mechanical troubles. That kind of performance would have been impossible without motor oil that could stand up under any kind of punishment. Without one universal oil for all types of service, both light and heavy duty. Thousands of barrels of oil for this job were supplied by Sacconi vacuum. Oil that was tested, tortured, proved on the battlefields of World War II. Pioneered by Sacconi vacuum before the war, this type of motor oil even then proved so superior that after Pearl Harbor, every gallon made was drafted for a service in America's military vehicles and in essential trucks and buses here at home on the production front. During the war years, the revolutionary refining methods that produced this great oil were still further improved so that the final product met the severe operating requirements of modern, more powerful engines better by far than ever before. Now it's home from the wars, available to civilian America, ready to provide the same kind of unequaled engine protection at home as it did on the world's recent battlefronts. A brief review of the demands any engine makes of its lubricant provides the best understanding of the way this amazing new mobile oil performs. The first thing needed is fast turnover to permit quick, easy starting, but with no sacrifice in protection against wear. Oil must also be free flowing, must get around fast to all working parts to provide protection as soon as the engine starts. It must be double range too, to meet both high and low temperature needs. Light enough for easy turnover and rapid circulation when the engine is cold, yet heavy enough to furnish maximum protection at high temperatures and speeds. The next protection requirement is the ability of the oil to provide a slippery, lubricated surface even when there is no real liquid oil film present. That calls for marked friction, and wear-reducing properties in the lubricant used. There is still another protection requirement of the modern engine, one that has grown more and more serious through the years as engines have steadily shrunk smaller and smaller, although delivering more and more power. That requirement is increased protection against engine deposits. For the full story on this problem of engine deposits, Let's listen to the chief automotive engineer of Sacconi Vacuum, Mr. George A. Round. We're here today to talk about another big improvement in mobile oil. A step forward just as important, just as great as the Clearasol process, introduced in 1935. Ever since this company first began to make lubricants, and that's a good many years ago, 
We've had just one idea in mind. Not to make them just good enough to meet service requirements, but to make them better, with a large margin to spare. That was true of the oil that we made for George Selden's first engine. The oil that made possible the success of the early automobiles. And it's been true ever since. When an engine leaves the factory, every part is new, clean, and free to work easily. For long continued efficient operation, the engine parts should stay clean. But an inspection of many engines that have seen service shows that the working parts, in fact the whole interior of the engine, gradually become coated with deposits. Where does engine dirt come from? Well, a small amount of road dust and dirt get into the engine. But unless dust conditions are bad, they do not increase deposits a great deal. Most of the dirt comes from the lubricating oil and from the fuel when it is not burned efficiently. Deposits from the fuel consist of soot, which is finely divided carbon, lead compounds, and small amounts of gummy materials. Along with these, there is a large amount of water, which is always formed when gasoline burns. Most of the water goes out the exhaust in the form of steam. We can see it coming out of the tailpipe on a cold morning. Some of the other materials adhere to the oil film on the cylinder walls and are swept down into the crankcase. Some adhere to the piston tops and to the insides of the combustion chambers, along with traces of oil. There, they build up what we call carbon deposits. A small amount of water, either as liquid or steam, may collect and aggravate sludge deposits in the crankcase. Deposits coming from the lubricating oil are formed by oxidation. Oil plus air equals lacquer, gum, and sludge. The chemical action on the oil by oxygen from the air. This action is like that of the rusting of iron. When iron or steel combines with oxygen from the air, a deposit, rust, is formed. And the more heat, the more rust. If the metal, even in the form of steel chips or steel wool, is dry, it resists rust for a time. But let it get wet, and it turns to rust very quickly. Water speeds up rusting. Much the same action takes place in the drying of paint we add dryer to paint to make it harden quickly, which is the same kind of action that water promotes in rusting iron. When exposed to the air, paint first becomes gummy. You know, that's the time most people have to find out for themselves if it's still wet. The action is the same with varnish or lacquer. So some engine deposits are called lacquer. If we want to do a good paint job, we wait for a warm day and then apply the paint in a thin coat. It will dry quickly to a hard surface. A thick coat applied on a cold day dries slowly. Oxidation is swell with paint, but not with engine oil. Exactly the same conditions which promote the rusting of steel or the drying of paint also promote the oxidation of oil. High temperatures, long time use, beating the oil up into a fine mist so that air can mix with it intimately, spreading it thin, in other words. The metals of the engine help speed up oil oxidation. They act like water on iron and dryer in paint. By far the most important factor in oil oxidation is temperature. If we heat iron hot enough, it will burn. And the same thing is true of oil. Raising the temperature of oil 20 degrees just doubles the speed with which it oxidizes. And this doubling process keeps right on for every 20 degrees increase in temperature. That's why modern hot running engines punish oil a lot more than older designs. But modern engines also make it tough for oil in other ways. Engine crankcases don't hold much oil and very little makeup oil is put in between drains. The oil is used over and over again. And you know how long some people have tried to make it last. That factor of time again. With close fitted bearings, with high speeds and with large pumps that force the oil through the bearings many times a minute, it is spread out thinner, atomized more finely, mixed more thoroughly with air than in the past. 
Oil may oxidize to form gummy deposits, lacquer or varnish-like material that coats pistons, valves, and sometimes bearings, ruining engine performance. It may form soft black sludge and hard granular particles like coffee grounds that collect in the oil reservoir, on oil screens, and in other places inside the engine, interfering with oil circulation. Carbon deposits form on piston heads, behind rings, and throughout the combustion chamber, causing knocking. Rings become clogged and inactive, boosting blow-by and oil consumption. Oil may thicken, increase in body until it is several times as thick as it was originally. That causes hard starting, cuts down power, and wastes fuel. It may develop acids, which shorten bearing life. Several, in fact, all of these conditions can develop in any engine, depending upon operating conditions and the kind of oil used. Oil gets oxidation punishment both upstairs and downstairs, in the cylinders as well as in the crankcase. Some oil gets by the rings, into the combustion chamber, onto the piston heads. Some sticks to the cylinder walls. If it didn't, the piston rings wouldn't be lubricated. Some of this oil mixes with soot and lead compounds and stews down to form what we call carbon deposits. Some is burned and goes out the exhaust. The oil on the cylinder walls is exposed to the heat of the combustion chamber and the action of the air in the fuel mixture. This thin film is subjected to severe oxidation and some of it gets back into the crankcase due to blow-by and the pumping action of the rings. It carries with it soot and gummy materials anything resulting from incomplete combustion of the fuel. If all of these materials stayed dissolved in the oil, as salt or sugar dissolved in water, they would be less troublesome. But instead, they gradually separate, settle, or are thrown out of the oil to form engine dirt or deposits, which collect all through the engine. Filters remove some of this material, particularly dust and metal particles but are not large or efficient enough to prevent all engine deposits. Naturally, the smaller the amount of deposit, the better an engine will run, and the longer it will deliver top performance. But as long as fuel is burned to run an engine, some deposits from it will be formed. As long as oil is used, it will always be subject to some oxidation if temperatures are high enough. It can always be made to burn which is merely complete oxidation. When it comes to reducing deposits that are formed from the oil itself, Sarconi Vacuum has already pioneered the greatest advances ever made. Solvent refining by the Clearasol process, followed by solvent de-waxing and filtering. Using carefully selected crudes, vacuum distilled, these refining processes gave finished oils from which the unstable, easily oxidized elements were more completely removed than ever before. These processes are being used today to make mobile oil. The next step toward cleaner engines is to increase the stability of the oil itself so that despite the severity of modern engine requirements, it will more effectively resist the chemical changes which are speeded up by high temperatures and the presence of hot metal surfaces. And that's the first great improvement that has now been made in mobile oil. Its ability to resist oxidation in hot running engines has been greatly increased. This new development means that those chemical reactions which cause oil to thicken, acids to develop, gum and sludge to form, those reactions have been so greatly slowed down that even under the worst operating conditions, the oil undergoes little change. In other words, it retains its original performance characteristics to an unusually high degree in service. Remember we said that deposits come from both the fuel and the lubricating oil? Because no engine always burns its fuel perfectly, because temperatures always can go high enough to cause some oil oxidation, there will always be some deposit forming material getting into the oil, as you can see here. The only way to prevent them from causing trouble eventually is to keep them suspended in the oil in such finely divided form that they are harmless, as if dissolved, we might say, so held that they do not settle on engine parts. In developing methods, not only for greatly increasing oil stability,
but also for doing this new, unique job, keeping potential deposits harmlessly held in the oil. Sacconi Vacuum pioneers a new and revolutionary advance in oil for motor cars. Mobile oil now not only gives better lubrication than ever before, but it also keeps the engine clean. Mobile oil now actually holds engine dirt within itself, much as a soap and water mixture holds the dirt it removes from your hands. Soot from the fuel and lacquer forming and sludge forming materials are kept in such finely divided form that they do not settle out of the oil. This is a new principle in engine lubrication. When the time comes to drain the oil, engine dirt is carried off with the drainings and the fresh oil continues to keep the engine clean. Today, thanks to its new outstanding improvements, Mobile Oil is, more than ever before, the world's leading motor oil. Thank you, Mr. Round. And now, for America's war-weary cars, comes new assurance of safer engine protection, better engine performance, thanks to the amazing new mobile oil. Here's positive proof of its ability to make vital working parts cleaner and to prevent damage to bearing surfaces. Some 50 cars ranging from 1937 to 1941 models and with mileages up to 75,000 were selected for testing. These cars included practically every popular make, were all privately owned, not company cars, and all had been driven steadily under wartime conditions. First, all the engines were torn down, carefully inspected and photographed then reassembled without cleaning and without changing any adjustment or replacing any parts. Then they were refilled with the new mobile oil and driven from 1,000 to 2,000 miles under wartime regulations. Again they were taken down, inspected and photographed. Here is a pair of pistons from one of the cars photographed before the test. And here are the same pistons 2,000 miles later. Notice how the old lacquer deposits are being removed. And even after this short mileage, the oil drain grooves are beginning to clean up. These valves, photographed before the test, are from the same engine. After the test period on the new mobile oil, the deposits on the stems have been almost entirely cleaned off. This means more efficient operation less chance for a valve sticking and power waste. Here's a set of Babbitt bearings before the test and after. Note how the lacquer deposits have been cleaned off, reducing friction and permitting better lubrication. Along with this cleaning action, there has been no tendency to pick up and circulate material which would damage the bearings. The results of the test on these cars plainly shows that engine conditions were definitely improved even in a short period of driving on the new mobile oil. A test conducted under heavy duty service conditions shows equally excellent results. Under these conditions, main bearings such as copper lead types are susceptible to damage by corrosion and deposit accumulations if the oil used is not sufficiently stable and heat resistant. This set of bearings run on a so-called heavy-duty oil, plainly shows lead discoloration, heavy deposits, and severe corrosion. These bearings were run on the new mobile oil under exactly the same heavy-duty service conditions as the others. They are perfectly clean and show not the slightest trace of corrosion. For successful diesel engine operation, piston and ring cleanliness is all important. Pre-war mobile oil was a fine diesel engine oil, as you can see by these pistons shown after the so-called 35-hour screen test. But look at this set run under identical conditions on the post-war new mobile oil. However, its real value is best shown by the Caterpillar 480-hour test. The new mobile oil keeps pistons really clean. It provides better protection for today's passenger cars, all older 
and with far more mileage than ever before. Better protection for all the different types and sizes of trucks that form an essential part of our national transportation. Better protection for hard-working tractors and many other types of farm machine engines that must still win the big battle for food. Better protection, performance, and economy of operation for both carburetor type engines and diesel engines, regardless of whether they are used for light or heavy duty service. Today's new mobile oil permits fast turnover for a quick start, circulates promptly so that all working parts get oil immediately on starting, affords complete protection against wear, scuffing, corrosion, keeps engines clean, minimizing gum, sludge, and carbon provides maximum efficiency, low oil and fuel consumption, no foaming, minimum repair expense. Today's new mobile oil, finest ever made by Sacconi Vacuum, is unmatched for any service, heavy or light, in gasoline or diesel engines. It provides a new high standard of engine protection and performance marks a new milestone in the long leadership of the greatest brand name in petroleum. <laughs>